So the house was vacant for over a year and a half and um, when we got here there were things growing everywhere where I didn't think anything could grow and I didn't know what any plant was, rhyme, reason. Really there was nothing salvageable. There was some red bud trees. Had they not been in the foundation bed, red bud trees are okay, but it was the wrong plant for that spot and they were way too large. There was nothing proportionate about anything in the foundation plantings that really could stay or be salvageable. So the best thing we did could do was just get everything out of the way, start fresh. There was a large walnut tree here that wasn't doing well at all. It hardly had any leaves compared to the others. And so we decided to get that out of the way too. And then to replace it, we put a nice dwarf crab apple tree that will bloom beautiful in the spring, develop fruit, attracting birds was one of the objectives here. So there's a lot of bird friendly plant material. And so everything looks new and fresh and cohesive. That's the other thing. A lot of times when you try to work around existing plant material and you add new, that's exactly what it looks like. It's like a bad addition on a house. <laughs> <laughs> and the color. The color is amazing. Like we had just white and this is just gorgeous. The variation of what you did on the front with all the different levels and that's what I wanted to know too like I want to understand where is everything supposed to go. We talk a lot about layering the garden and especially with your beds being so deep from foundation to walkway we have room for several layers mm -hmm. and so we want to make the most of that keep it interesting not let it get too crowded. I will say though you do have room in there to play you can add mm -hmm. some more annuals or perennials if you like. Okay. I think the shrubs are spaced appropriately there is some room okay. if you want to add more. Of course, when we go through what we call demolition and get everything out of the way to make the blank slate, we were dealing with things that were overgrown. I try real hard to select things that are appropriate size at maturity. When I place something beneath the window, I don't want it to ever grow taller than the bottom of okay. the windowsill. Okay. Or when things are placed near the walkway, I don't want them ever to spill out over the walkway or the things in the front get taller than the things in the back. So things were selected and placed appropriately, even though it seems like there's a lot of space there. You have to realize it's brand new. It does need time to grow in. But when it grows in, it's not going to be too full yeah. or overcrowded. See, and I think it looks so neat. If you, you guys have pictures of before, there was no mulch area except for the edge where it was dirt and yeah, so I, it's just, it was so packed. Went from one extreme I, to the I, other. I don't know how you demoed it as fast as you guys did. I mean, the team's amazing. We thought we would have to do like the French drains uh, on the inside of the basement we want to finish. There was so much water pouring everywhere in, um, creating many problems. And when you guys came out, it was just amazing the grading that happened. And we haven't had any water, any moisture at all get in our basement with all the huge downpours. So, I mean, that completely solved our issue and we're not nervous at all about finishing our basement. Now the water leaves the foundation leaves. instead of going yeah. towards it. it was amazing, yeah. So this is a Poncyrus flying dragon, or hardy orange. It had little white flowers on it, which will then often turn to fruit. Little miniature bitter oranges, they are edible, but don't taste very okay. good. It's a cool ornamental plant. It's very deer resistant. It does have thorns on it, but architecturally, it's just really interesting. We had this space in between where we needed something a little bit special. I didn't want to just put in another rhododendron or boxwood, so. That's sort of the specimen in that area. This is a dwarf lilac, very slow growing, much slower leaf than what your standard old fashioned lilacs are. It's actually a Korean lilac. And so the idea is to maintain it in a small topiary form, not to let it touch the house or get as high as the gutter. We wanna keep it basically shaped the way it is, just get a little bit larger. The osmanthus back there under the window, it's a variegated 
false holly. Its leaf is shaped like a holly, but it's really a false holly. And I don't like to use green on green on green. So you see, even though there's different shades of green, variegation with the osmanthus, variegation with the boxwood, pops of red with the maple, just trying to make an eclectic but interesting assortment of colors and textures. We talked a little bit about the reason why things appear small. This is not an ordinary Japanese maple. It's one called Tromberg, and it's described as a superior variety for both color. The shape of the leaf is incredible. It's a little bit more special than some of your other Japanese maples. And I envision this getting as tall as the top of the shutters and about as wide as the space between the windows that it really will be the centerpiece of this bed when it has a little bit of time to grow. Usually on the corners is a great place to anchor the foundation. So we used a flowering cherry at the far end over there, and that's sort of balanced with this crab apple at this end. Even though this one is out of the foundation bed and near it, it still gives you that balanced look. I, I just, okay, I have to say this night. <laughs> But Becky, you are so professional, and um, I wanted to come out and hug you, but I felt like I didn't want to throw you back. And I'm a hugger, but you, what you've done here is just, I, I don't enthusiastically show it, but that would be my way. And I just felt like I, I didn't want to, you would be like, who is this crazy No, lady? it was so. such a hot week. I don't think you would want to get any closer <laughs> to hugging, but I think and other hugs are always welcome. But no, I'm glad, I'm glad you like the transformation. You love the transformation, yeah.